Hello and welcome to another tutorial on EDIUS Pro and version 9. Most of the things that we will show you in this uh, tutorial or this series of tutorials on how to edit with EDIUS Pro uh, will also be applicable to earlier versions of EDIUS. Not a whole lot has changed uh, as far as the actual editing interface goes. And so if you're still running on EDIUS 7 or EDIUS 8, uh, most of the things that we show you here will still work uh, with your version of the program. Let's open up the project that uh, we have started working on. You'll notice that uh, this uh, project that we started, A Home Away From Home, is actually a project that I have already completed several months back. And uh, I just thought it would be a good project to use as a way to demonstrate how to edit in EDIUS because it has a lot of different elements um, coming from different uh, suppliers using still photography, uh, video from a number of different types of cameras. So I thought it would be a good uh, project to rebuild as we show you how to edit in EDIUS. And over here in our bin window you see that we have uh, sorted out a lot of material here from the different sources that we used for this project. And if you would like more information on how to organize your media in the bin window, there is a tutorial online here at YouTube uh, that you can refer to. We'll put uh, the link up here at the top. But other than that, uh, let's go ahead and get started um, showing you how to rebuild this project that I have edited. The first thing that we'll do is start a new sequence here. Uh, this is the icon that we use here in the timeline window. Just click on that and that'll start a new sequence. You'll see it showing up here in, in a tab. And uh, if you right click on that, you'll see one of your options is sequence settings. And basically what this allows you to do is rename it from sequence 2 to a more appropriate name. And with version 9 of EDIUS, you are allowed to type in a longer name here that will show up in the tab. Let's, let's try that. Home away from home, and uh, let's hit OK. And you'll see the whole title shows up there. It used to be it would truncate um, only about, give you about this much room. Now, the first thing that we'll probably do, it looks like this particular version of our project was started before we set up our new user settings for projects and so we have ended up with a track here that is both video and audio and since we don't use that we're going to get rid of that just right click anywhere in that area and uh, delete that and that gets rid of that and also we don't use the title track so we're going to get rid of that just right click in there and that opens up the uh, dialog and we can hit delete Okay, and let's open up our video track so we have a little bit more room there to display our thumbnails. Let's move our audio track up to the first track. And uh, let's make sure that uh, you are using the same settings that I am. Just right click on this audio one, two, and make sure that your audio source is uh, checked down here, audio source channel stereo. And that gets us pretty much on the same page. Oh yeah, one other change, we're gonna, uh, edit most of this in the what's called the overwrite mode. There will be some times when we want to switch back to the insert mode and we'll show you what, how that changes things when you go to edit. But as we get started here let's just go ahead with the overwrite mode and uh, let's maybe rename these uh, instead of 1V let's uh, rename this just by right clicking in that area you can change this. We'll do a main video We'll see that right now we only have one video track. We'd probably prefer to have at least three. So let's click in this area here and hit Add. And let's hit the Add V track to above. And um, let's go ahead and change this to two. So we'll add two tracks. And that'll give us two more video tracks to work with. And let's rename this uh, one to um, Graphics. And then let's rename this first audio track uh, Ambient Audio. And maybe the second track we'll rename Narration Track. And let's rename the third one to be Music Track. And we'll just leave the fourth one alone for now. Now you see that this track is a little uh, wider than others and we can expand it out to uh, see our waveform uh, for our audio a little uh, more prominently. And you can do that with any track. Just open it up and uh, with your mouse 
kind of in between the two tracks there. Hold down your left mouse button and scroll up and that opens that up wider. And depending on what audio track you're working with, you'll probably want to open those up or close them. And that way you can see more of the track that you're working with. Okay, I think we're ready now to start uh, editing. Let's start with our opening sequence. And the first thing I usually like to do is grab the music track for that so that we can edit to the beat of the music. Now there's several ways that you can bring media into your project. Perhaps for this type of thing, uh, the easiest way is just to drag and drop it from your bin right down into your timeline window. And we'll place it in our music track. So let's just drag it down uh, to that music track area and we see our audio track down there with its waveform. Now, uh, by default, when you start a new project, the track is uh, its not turned off. We could play it. Let's put our timeline here and uh, press the space bar on your computer, and that lets you play um, the timeline. You can actually watch the uh, needle or the timeline uh, travel across the track, and it's playing it. But we would not, at this point, be able to change the volume of that track because we have this turned off over here. So just take your mouse over here and uh, just click on this once and you'll see an orange line appear on your audio track and that is a flat line that shows you that the volume is uh, by default set at this level all the way across. And probably the first thing that we would want to do is check uh, the levels of that audio track and we can open up our audio meter display here by this little icon up here. Let's click on that and it shows up here. Now let's play this track again. Hit the space bar. And we see that's uh, going up um, a little bit high into the danger zone. In the digital age um, it's probably best not to go over too much uh, of the minus 12. And so let's bring our audio volume down a little bit and the way that we want to bring the whole track down uh, at the same level is hold down your alt key on your keyboard before pointing to the orange line and then with your left mouse button click on that orange line and drag it down about that much and uh, let's play it again and we see that that uh, is a more appropriate audio level to uh, be at when you're producing videos in the digital age. If you start getting up into the zero mark or even a little higher into the red, uh, that's going to break out in a lot of the uh, playing environments and, and cause distortion and you just don't want that on your video. So especially the very opening piece, you want to be at the level uh, where most of the rest of your video is going to be at so that as people start to play your video, they'll adjust their audio to that level and the rest of your video will be at the level that it's supposed to be based on how they have set their levels right at the beginning of your video. So we've reduced the whole track of audio. Now, if you had wanted to reduce just a certain portion of that audio, what you would do is click on any point in the timeline where you want to reduce it more and that will create what we call a node and then go downstream just a little bit and create another node and then by pointing to that node and clicking with your left mouse button down and dragging it down you'll see that you can reduce the volume over time that's without the alt key held down if we had pressed down on the alt key in our keyboard before we move you'll see it again moves the whole timeline but in this case we would just want to reduce a certain level and so we don't hold the Alt key down, and that brings that down. And if we wanted to bring the rest of that track down, we just go to the very last node here, and with our mouse, drag that down to be level. But for this opening piece of uh, video, we pretty much want the same um, level of volume the whole way, so I'm just going to undo that. And Edius uses a lot of the same keyboard shortcuts that your favorite word processor uh, would use, so if we want to undo, you can just hit the Control Z, and there we go, we've hit the undo twice and we're back to a full level audio all the way. Now, before we go any further, I'd like to um, move this track down our timeline a ways. I usually like to allow two or three minutes of empty space at the beginning of my projects and that way if I want to try something out, I've got some area to, to work in there. Now, as you start a new sequence, uh, Edius by default doesn't seem to give you very much uh, 
time on your timeline. But that's you're not limited to that in Edius. Uh, you can have a timeline, I believe, of unlimited length. And uh, in order to see more of our timeline than what comes by default, let's go up to this little area here where it says fit. And let's maybe go down and choose 30 seconds. Now we can see more of our timeline. And uh, it goes up to 18 minutes now. So now we can take our mouse and point and select this little piece of audio and move it down our timeline. Just with your mouse held down, you can drag it uh, down your timeline and pop it in there maybe two minutes or three minutes, somewhere down there. And that gives us some space to work in if we want to try out a few things as we're editing. Now there's actually a much easier way to expand and contract your timeline so that you can see more of it at any given time or see less of it if you want to zoom in on a particular part of your project that you're working in. And that is by setting up some keyboard shortcuts. And I'm going to put a link to a video where we've done a tutorial on how to create your own keyboard shortcuts. Specifically, we show you how to create a keyboard shortcut for uh, expanding and contracting your timeline. I've set it up to work with my negative and plus keys and uh, so now when I want to contract my timeline I just have to hit my negative key and that makes my timeline much larger. If I want to zoom in on my timeline and work on any specific area I just hit the plus key. And now we see our piece of audio filling the screen. So minus and plus. And if you want to see how to set that up on your keyboard shortcuts, or you can actually choose any keys you want to assign to this task, and how to create custom keyboard shortcuts, well just follow the link to the video that's at the top of the screen here, and uh, that tutorial will show you how to do that. So from now on, rather than going up here and selecting the size our timeline should be, we're just going to use our keyboard shortcuts. So whenever you hear me going like this, you'll know that that's what I'm doing. I'm contracting the timeline using a keyboard shortcut. And I think if you set that up, you'll find that you'll save yourself a lot of time as you work on projects. All right, uh, before we close up this uh, first lesson, let's uh, bring in some video to go with our opening audio. Maybe uh, I'll just show you what the opener ended up looking like by going over to our edited video. And play that. So what I've done is I've created some still shots uh, and uh, in a After Effects project uh, created some special effects for it. It's kind of a brush uh, effect along with some titles in After Effects and uh, I've produced a number of uh, slides and so let's just bring those in to our project. Let's go over to our bin window and uh, track down that footage probably in this bin here, Graphics. Yeah, here it is here. So there's several ways that you can bring your media in from your bin window over into your preview window over here. One is what I just did was I double clicked on the media and it shows up here in our preview window. And we can take our uh, mouse and point to the little down arrow timeline type of symbol there and drag across and uh, preview our clip all the way through. Another way that we can play this is just by hitting the space bar as long as our play window is our focus of interest. And when we say focus, uh, notice that there's a little blue highlight around this window. If our if we click over here, we'll notice that the blue is uh, now over in our record monitor. And if we hit our space bar now, uh, we would actually be playing our timeline, not our previewing our clip. So in order for the space bar to actually play the clip in our preview window, we need to have that selected. Just point your mouse to it, click in that area. You'll notice that the blue area of focus is now on our play window. And now when we hit our space bar, it's going to play the clip that is showing up in our preview window. So that's if you want to preview your clip to see what portion of it you want to uh, select to bring into your timeline. Another way to bring your media right into your project is to simply point to the clip in your bin window and with your mouse button held down, drag and drop the media right into your timeline itself. And you'll see by pointing it to the track one there, the main video, and letting your mouse button go, it's going to show up right there in the uh, main video track. 
So we see that the actual design of our video in After Effects is longer than our piece of music and it's probably running too long for an opener anyway so we need to cut it down. And we can do that in several different ways. Let's just maybe move our piece of media that we already placed on our timeline down out of our, our way. Let's go up to our preview window and uh, find that point in the clip where we want to start, maybe from black. So we'd maybe just go right to the first frame there. And down over here we see this little icon here is setting an endpoint. Let's click on that. And then let's either play our clip or drag this little icon across to that point where we think we have enough of it and go down and set an out point. So now what we want to do is get that portion of our video down to our timeline. And there are a number of different ways we can do that. Um, we could do the drag and drop method where we just point to that clip, press down our left mouse button and drag that clip right into place where we want it started with our the beginning of our music. Let's maybe open up our timeline so that we can see what we're doing a little better. And so we have this first section of video and what we want to do is have that on our timeline just long enough to kind of go with the, the music itself. Now that our focus is in our timeline and we can see that by the little blue border that is now going around our timeline window and also you will see that the blue border is now showing up in our record window. So now when we hit the space bar, it's going to play our timeline. So we see that the music changes right there. That's where we want to start our next clip. Now because we are in the overwrite mode of editing, we could just by leaving our timeline cursor there, grab our next piece of video. So let's go back up to our preview window and uh, play that and see where we want to start our next video. Probably right about there, maybe back up just a little bit. Set our in point, and let's just drag it down. Doesn't You don't have to be so precise on the out point, because as you notice, as we drag this down into place, we can overwrite this area that uh, we had in our last clip that was more than we needed. So just dragging it in right to that point where the timeline cursor is, and letting go of your mouse, we have brought in our next clip. And as we listen to our music, that's probably the next point that we want. Now, if another way that we could set up our endpoint there or, or make it easy to know where we want to bring in our next clip is we could go to the edge of this clip here and uh, then click down with our mouse and just drag it back to uh, snap into our timeline cursor there. Now we know exactly where to place the next piece of media. Even if our timeline cursor gets moved, we'll know exactly where we want to place our next clip. Let's go back up to our preview window and find that in point again. Probably right about there. And about, well, that's probably a lot more than what we need, but remember it's not so critical on the out point. Now, at this time, instead of um, drag and dropping, let's try a couple of other ways. Let's put our timeline cursor where we want the next video clip to start and let's go back up to our play window and this time with an in and out point selected and our timeline cursor exactly placed where we want the next clip to go we can just go up to this little overwrite to timeline button click on it and it will bring our next piece of media right into place That's probably a good spot for our next clip. And we'll probably something like right about there. We'll do our in point, set an out point. And this time, before hitting our overwrite to timeline, I want to show you what you can do if you have a case where you want the video, but not the audio. Sometimes there might be some inappropriate audio or audio that uh, is just too loud and you'd rather not use it at all and you just want the video track not the audio well what we can do is go over here in our timeline window and unselect the a here and now when we use our overwrite to timeline or even our drag and drop method it's only going to bring in the video not the audio portion of our clip let's try it out we'll see that it only brought in the video and no audio 
right about there is our next spot. Go back to our preview window. And as long as our audio is unselected, all we'll be bringing over is video. There's our next spot. So you get the idea of how you can set your in and out points and either drag and drop your video onto your timeline or use our placement uh, tool here to overwrite to the timeline and that's going to bring it into where your timeline cursor is set. But uh, before we wrap up this tutorial, let's show you another way we could have done this. Let's just go and select this whole area by lassoing it with your mouse. You can point to anywhere in your timeline and just click down with your left mouse button and start dragging and lassoing all of the media that you want to select. And then let's just hit the delete key so it's gone. And this time let's use a different approach where we're dragging our whole clip from just straight from our bin and dragging it into our timeline. Well, we see that because we have this area selected in and out, that's that's all it's giving to us. But we can go to any edge here and just start dragging it out so we have the full clip and go the other way. So now this time, let's use a different method of editing this up to the music. Let's start it right at the beginning there. In fact, I think there's just a few seconds of black. It's just too much there. Let's open up our timeline a little bit more and just drag this back a little bit a few seconds till we start seeing that first little bit of video and then let's just point to our clip and drag it back to match up with the beginning of our audio so that works a little better so this is our change of music spot right here now with our timeline cursor set right on that point where we want to make the cut hit your C key and you'll see was what happened here is our video clip is now cut in two. We have two portions. If we collapsed our timeline, we'd see that this is one section and we have cut right into that very first clip. We've made our first cut. Let's open up our timeline a little bit. Now what we want to do is find the next point in that clip where we want to bring in the next portion of media. So we just point to the edge of that and start sliding it down. And we see that our next piece of media is right about there and so when we've found that spot we can now just point to our clip and drag it over to butt up against the first piece of video so there's our change of music again with our cursor set right at the the point where we want to make our edit just hit the c key and that separates that makes a cut in our media and now we can slide this across looking for our next point of entry there and drag that across to butt up against that point where the music changes. There's our next point. So again we make a, a cut and our next piece of media starts about there. And a lot of times when you're cutting to the music, you can actually look at the waveform of your audio and see exactly where that big dramatic change is or where the beat of the music is, is hitting. Place our timeline exactly there. Let's hit the C key. Yeah, something to point out is that in order for the C key to cut the actual video track, you have to make sure that your video track is selected. If for some reason we had our audio track selected and hit the C key, well you see it's going to make a cut in our audio track and we don't want that at this point at least. So let's hit the undo key, control Z or Z, and make sure that our video track is selected before we hit the C key. And then we'll slide this down, look for that next change in video, somewhere about there. Slide that back and listen for our next change. about there. Hit the C key again and look for the next change. Somewhere about there would be good I think. Somewhere right about there would be nice. Well, you get the idea of how this is another way that you can actually edit your clips, edit your project right on the timeline itself. 
what I'm trying to point out here is that EDIUS is designed to work in a lot of different ways. It's set up so that people who are coming from different video editing programs, they can set up their interface and work pretty much the way they're used to working coming from any other program. And if you're brand new to editing, well, you can develop your own style based on the options that EDIUS gives you. If you want to take that extra time to double click on your media in your bin window or drag and drop it over into your play window and you know scroll through here and find your in and out points, uh, well, you can do it that way. You can work a lot like you would coming from Avid software, for example. I, I believe we have a tutorial showing you how you can do three-point style editing. And I'll put a link up in the corner right now in our tutorial to show you uh, where to go to watch that video so that you can, if you're coming from Avid software, you can easily set up your EDIUS interface to work with that three-point style of editing. But if you want to save some time and you want to do more of a freestyle type of edit, you might want to try out this method of just dragging and dropping your media right to the timeline and do your editing right here on the timeline. And here's our last slide with the title of the uh, video. And then what we'd probably do just to finish up is grab a color, a black color mat from our bin and uh, take it over to the very end of the video and just do a fade out. And in our next tutorial, we'll show you how to add that nice dissolve out. But I believe we've covered enough for one tutorial. So thanks for watching uh, this video on how to edit with EDIUS Pro Part 1. And if you have found this uh, video helpful, go ahead and uh, hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't, and the little bell button there, if you hit that, uh, you'll get notified each time we produce a new video. And that way you can uh, follow along with our lessons here at Learning Media Skills and EDIUSTips.com. Farewell for now.